Recording in progress. We are ready, Dr. Shelley on Cox. Thank you, Nadine. Good night to everyone. A warm and pleasant good night. I am pleased to invite you to this momentous occasion, the Leadership Institute um, ceremony, a graduation of SARS. We're so happy to be here after gaining more knowledge and insight in leadership and other important um, topics. Um, over the past few months, I'm delighted to see, you know, representation from the different countries in the Caribbean. Um, I am, you can, you can indicate where you're from in the chat, um, but, you know, we're seeing people from, from Belize um, straight down to actually Guyana. I'm not sure I'm not seeing anybody from Suriname, but we have good representation. We want to welcome everybody here tonight. We have quite an interesting lineup tonight. Um, we'll have even some entertainment and a special item on the card. So please look forward to that. At this time, I'm going to welcome um, the CNFO Deputy Chair, Mr. Winsbert Harry to start us and lead us in a word of prayer. Good night, um, each and everyone. Um, you hear me loud and clear, right? Loud and clear. We can see you as okay, well. My, a bit, a bit okay. dark, but we can see your feature. <laughs> okay, then. Um, my scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 105, verse 1 to mm -hmm. verse 6. Then I will open up with a word of prayer. And it says like this. Give thanks unto the Lord and call unto his name. Make his known deed amongst the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto his him and talk should all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name and let his heart be of them that rejoice and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength and seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works and he has done his wonders and adding his judgment unto his mouth. O oh, the seed of Abraham and his servant of the children of Job. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for tonight, O oh God. And if you give me thanks for the proceeding for tonight, Lord, I help you to take it in your course, O oh God. Father, as though we are so far from each other, and separate from each other as we're using this new technology, Lord. I bring that we could have good communication and good service among this gathering here tonight, oh God, Father. Father, I ask that you could take this course, Lord, as you know the struggles of us as fisher folks, as we are not meeting face to face, but I'd like this opportunity on behalf of the CNFO to bring us together in one platform, although we are not seeing each other face to face. Father, I continue and I ask you, Lord, to bless us throughout the night tonight that we could have good internet service and a good program going forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Winsbert. Okay. Um, all right. We, we have everyone on board. Yes. Okay. So 
Um, thanks again with spirit. The scripture was very fitting as well to keep us inspired um, as we go about uh, living within um, the complexities of being in a pandemic, as well as spikes. Um, but thanks again for that. I'm going to welcome um, CNFO's chair, Mr. Adrian Laroda, to give us. Sorry about that. Mr. Glanson White, the General Secretary of CNFO, to give us the opening welcome. I was just confirming that he was online. Yes, he is. Um, so, Glanston. Hi, good night. Yes. Yeah, good night to you all. I would like to take this opportunity tonight to welcome you all to the CNFO Leadership Training commencement exercise for the year 2020. I would like to um, well, special welcome to you, Dr. Shelley Hancock, and also Dr. Sandra Grant, and all Fisher folks and CNFO family listening on this meeting tonight. I'd like to welcome you all and hope we have a productive night. And for those who, have, who are gonna be graduated, wish you all the best. And it was a good exercise going coming forward. So we'll look to see more of this. So thanks everyone for joining and hope we have a wonderful meeting tonight. Thank you guys. Thank you, Blanston. Next on our agenda tonight is the overview of the program by CNFO's chair, Mr. Adrian LaRoda. Um, he's also the president of the Bahamas Commercial Fisheries Alliance. And in his role as the chair of CNFO, he provides oversight to the CNFO's work plan, which includes offering a significant range of activities to improve the livelihoods of Caribbean fishers and fishing communities. Uh, Mr. LaRoda, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here. And I apologize for my tardiness because for whatever reason, I can never seem to get used to the time difference uh, because I thought, figured that Eastern Standard Time was going to be basically one hour from now, but not realizing that in the Bahamas, we still adhere to daylight savings time. So uh, wherever you are, I'm one hour either behind or before doesn't matter, before and after, I like it all. But thank you again. Uh, protocol, I uh, want to establish, I want to welcome everyone here, all of the persons who have been presenters with the CNFO's Learning Institute, uh, to my Secretary General, the, the officers and members of the Caribbean Network of Fisher Folk Organizations, I greet, Greet you well and bid you good night. Some years ago, the CNFO through its members and sponsors and project partners came up with the idea of establishing a mechanism of continued working group, of, of continuing the working groups outside of the conferences and seminars that we would attend, which as we all know were primarily by invitation only and if you were not invited, there was no participation or limited participation. It is from this, this uh, uh, course of action that the Learning Institute was birthed. Over the years, the over the year that we've been doing this, the module for the Learning Institute were crafted and deliberately constructed to deliver the most beneficial and applicable real-time experiences and operational uh, uh, modalities for the environment in which we as fisher folk work in. Our modules covered exploring leadership, working with groups, facilitating the development of group visions, missions and goals, advocacy, rep advocacy representation, negotiating and conflict resolution relationship management, communications and networking, institutional identity and integrity. And lastly, administration and operations. All of these programs I felt through our, our, our 
consultations were going to be beneficial for in the in, in the long and short term for fisher folk leaders throughout the Caribbean. We hope that these eight sessions were beneficial to you as the participants, as it was the intention of the facilitators to use the best resource presenters. And I'm particularly happy in this instance to see the number of females involved in the Learning Institute. As we align with global and global uh, attentions towards gender equality, uh, uh, particularly for gender and youth, the CNFO felt that um, um, structuring the, the Learning Institute would have been beneficial for all. And we were happy to see the amount of females by the, the, the accolades that are gonna be presented tonight, the amount of females that were involved in the Learning Institute. The CNFO, as we move forward, intends to move into its next phase. And the next phase of the Learning Institute is by that we want to encourage all of our participants to spread the word about the Learning Institute among their peers so that we can have a, a, a better community in terms of regional fisheries, regional fisheries management as we build capacity and the Institute will further, further be able to transfer build capacity and transfer knowledge so that we continue with knowledge sharing among our organizations and communities. And as I be short to this, I wanna say thank you and welcome all. Thank you, Mr. LaRoda for that. Oh, yes, yes, we can clap tonight as well. <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, later when we have the presentation of awards, I want you to really cheer on um, your colleagues as well for this, this good, grand achievement. And we hope that, you know, as Mr. As Adrian was saying, really, that in this, you know, this next phase, we will build out um, participation in the countries, help to promote it within our country so that more persons can benefit um, from this knowledge. Well, at this point, we are moving on to the testimonials, and we're going to encourage those presenting to please turn on your camera so everyone can see you, see your nice smile, and uh, really connect with the stories and experiences that you have to share. And we're starting in St. Lucia, Mrs. Kajiana Toussaint Chalery. She's first up, and she's going to share her experience um, as, as you went about attending and also presenting some of the modules. Thank you. Thank you, shelly -Ann. And it's indeed a pleasure to be here this evening. It's indeed a pleasure to share this platform in another setting with my Fisher folk colleagues. I've been working in the fishing community for a little over 10 years. And I think the, the, the Learning Institute was indeed a timely venture. I have been on both sides of the fence, both as a facilitator and as a learner. And I must say it has been a joy sharing best practice, experiences and knowledge with my colleagues in the CNFO family. In my opinion, what the Leadership Institute gives us is an opportunity to dialogue amongst ourselves in a comfortable environment while we learn, grow, and develop ourselves. The shared experiences of both the young and the more experienced of those who manage the NFOs within the countries as well as practicing features has surely been a good learning experience and a true learning journey. Apart from the rich history of our organizations and the movement, what we have between and amongst us is a wealth of knowledge that we have to use to enhance the sector, to improve ourselves, and the organizations in which we serve. 
And the Learning Institute has really given us a platform from which we can launch from to achieve these things. And so as a learner and as a facilitator, I thank the CNFO Learning Institute for giving all of us an opportunity that perhaps some of us would not have experienced elsewhere and otherwise to learn, to grow, to share. It is with this that we can continue to ensure that these organizations that play a very, very vital role in the fishing sector continue to exist for a very, very long time. And so I thank the Learning Institute. I thank Nadine and all the hard work she puts in in ensuring that we, we are on time, we are on cue, that the information is sent out. I thank those who have continued to support the venture, such as Shelly Ann and the others. I thank Mitch for the opportunity that, that CNFO has given all of us within the CNFO member states to participate in the Learning Institute. Thank you. Yes, what a, what a great experience you had, Kay Gianna, and it's quite inspiring. And we're going to ask your colleague, Miss Susan Hodge, uh, she's from Anguilla, um, to, to share her experience as well. Just make sure. So, yeah, Susan, the floor is yours. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's hard to believe that it's almost two years since the start of the Leadership Institute. And I think it's even harder for me to believe that I am receiving a certificate of completion as part of that initiative. Why is it hard to believe? Well, I had recently joined the Anguilla Fisher Folk Association and it was, and I was a little wary of being a non-fishing woman in a program such as this. But I need not have worried because Nadine, Mitch, and all of my course mates ensured it was a calm, relaxing, and learning environment. Leadership is a challenge in whatever area you are chosen to lead. And the modules reminded me of some of the activities I had forgotten. But to lead is to learn, and it's also to leave a legacy. I think all of us here this evening, whether we complete it or not, have all learned something that will enhance the important role of fishers in our communities, regionally and on a world scale. Women are part of every industry, and it's no longer just the traditional preparing before or cleaning fish after. Women are fishing. They own the boats, they own the resources. Any fisher folk organization must recognize that collectively we can achieve so much and that collective must be led and led in a strategic way to ensure that fishers are respected, their hard work recognized and adequately remunerated and that they have a say in the sustainability of their livelihoods. This came out throughout the duration of the course. The subjects chosen were integral to the leadership of an organization. I had the privilege of presenting at two sessions. And I would like to think it was they were, both those sessions were well received. I'm also the daughter of a sailor and a fisherman, a man who loved the sea so much that after migrating to the United Kingdom in the 1960s, he ensured that he took early retirement and came back to his beloved Anguilla in the 1980s and once again took up fishing. My dad left me last year to join my mom and he was the ripe old age of 92, a true man of the sea. And he was very proud to know that although I cannot clean a fish, that I am helping fisher folk to make their mark in the world. Thank you to the CNFO, to my classmates, to everybody for allowing this to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. 
it's good to, to see how the fishing and the culture stays in the family. You know, my granddad was a fisherman too. So, um, you know, how stories are passed on and it's, it inspires us to continue the work in, in the industry and, and sector. Okay, and then finally, um, we're going to invite, we're to Barbados now, Miss Sylvia White, um, to share her experience in participating in the Leadership Institute. Sylvia, okay. And I see Paulette, your hand is raised. Do you have a question now before Sylvia joins us? No, 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 no. I was just trying to clap what I was. Oh. Okay, no problem. All right. Yes, yes, Sylvia. I think you're still muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good evening to everyone, and it's indeed a pleasure and an honor to be a part of this event this evening. Um, for over my 27, 28 years in the fishing industry, and being, for all my life, being around fisher people with my parents and grandparents being part of the fishing industry here in Barbados, uh, you know, I always gravitated to it, and, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. Um, to be in a setting like this where I can speak to other persons in the Caribbean. Um, the leadership training has given me a better and new perspective of leadership and the and life skills, molding me, molding me into a different person. It has given me the ability to deal with persons and situations differently, to handle and deal, deal with issues more rounded, work well embracing different cultures and personalities. It has taught me to look at leadership as a process, the difference between managers and leaders, leadership styles, and the changing role of leadership, about building and blending cultures, of monitoring and mentoring, about evaluating and mobilizing resources, about designing, collaborating, and building networks and partnerships, about working with life, about work life balance and care for persons I will be leading. It has also learned me about the val value of social media to the small scale fishers and networking tools and establishing and maintaining an e-presence to assist and enhance better communication across the sectors. I gain a better understanding of the importance of a strong, good institutional identity and maintaining integrity, accountability, credibility, reliability, and confidentiality. That maintaining, uh, that maintaining a good track record is what will inspire trust and acceptance of my leadership. And by maintaining that track record is the basis of building integrity, which will allow organizations to be taken seriously. It is indeed a pleasure. This evening, I want to thank CNFO a whole lot for all the leadership that they have put into us across the sector for introducing this training to all the partners, NGOs, and entities that funded and supported the training in, in, in any form. But I cannot close without saying special thanks to Nadine and Mitch for your support, your hard work throughout the years. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone, all the participants for the great, great sessions we had 
that ran really late into many nights. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you, Sylvia. Yes, I know sometimes the sessions run late, but you know, the conversation was very engaging and, you know, we learned a lot, especially like the exchanges of, you know, experiences among the different countries. We realized that some issues were quite similar and, um, you know, this is good because learning exchanges always help, um, you know, if we can all communicate and see how best we can address our problems. So thank you for that experience, Sylvia. And now, the moment we've been waiting for, or I have been waiting for especially, <laughs> is Mr. Shane Caesar, and he hails from Montserrat. I've seen some videos, and he is quite talented. And that's another thing within our, our, our fisher folk. We have quite talented fisher folk, not only singers, but, you know, in Barbados, uh -huh. we have poets, we have artists. And this is something we have to, you know, promote as well, too, in upcoming events. I really encourage um, our fisher folk to be creative and, you know, share the message of sustainability and conservation of the marine resources. So, Mr. Shane Caesar, I see you're there, you're up. Um, take us away. Good night, good night, good night to all. Thank you for having me here. It's indeed a pleasure. I am Shane Caesar. I'm 25 years old, born Guyanese, living in Montserrat for half my life, loving it here, being involved in the sea. I'm currently employed by Scuba Montserrat and into glass recycling project down on island. I'm also a fisher, uh, as I said, scuba diver, and I've been involved in the local lionfish project. And now we're dealing with stony coral tissue loss disease, trying to find the disease, the disease sorry, treat it, and hopefully we can save some of the corals from dying. So tonight my piece will be a poem. And my reason for this poem is that I lost my dad in 2020. And it so happened that I've only got to take him out to sea once, which in, I'm still happy for the opportunity. So the poem is called A Boy and His Dad. The poet is Edgar Guess. A boy and his dad on a fishing trip. There is a glorious fellowship, father and son and the open sky, and the white clouds lazily drifting by, and the laughing stream as it runs along with the clicking reel like a martial song, and the father teaching the youngster happily how to land a fish in a sportsman's way. I fancy I hear them talking there in an open boat and the speech is fair, and the boy is learning the ways of men from the finest man is in suitful keen. Kings to the youngster cannot compare with the gentle fathers who is with him there and the greatest mind of the human race, not for one minute could take his place. Which is happier, man or boy? The soul of a father is stepped in joy for he's finding out to his heart's delight that his son is fit for the future's fight. He is learning the glorious depths of him and the thoughts he thinks and his every whim. And he shall discover when night comes on how close he has grown to his little son, a boy and his dad on a fishing trip. Builders of life, companionship. companionship. Oh, I envy them as I see them there under the sky in open air. Far out the cold, oh, long ago, Come for summer days that I used to know when I learned life's truths from my father's life, turn from my fellowship. I share the joy of his fishing tips. I hope you enjoy that. From Edgar Guest. Very well done, Shane. Thank you for that. Quite an You're inspiring welcome. poem. Yes, I'm sure we all enjoyed that. Okay, all right, so our featured speaker for tonight is Dr. Sandra Grant. Um, do we say that you're still new or I guess you, you have been in over six months. So 
our Deputy Executive Director at the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism. Um, good to see you in this role. And of course, you know, Dr. Grant has been an inspiration to us um, young fisheries managers in the region, uh, especially with a lot of work that she would have done under the ACP Fisheries Project, for example. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome her tonight to deliver our featured address. And I look forward to her continued leadership. Thank you. Um, good night, Shelley. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Um, good night to everyone. And I know this is a, a special occasion. I just want to thank um, Nadine um, and Mitch for this kind invitation. At first, I thought I said no, but I, I just suck it up and I said, OK, I'll, I'll make an attempt at it. So protocol established, I will um, just like to say some brief words. But before I start, I just I would like to bring greetings from the executive director, Mr. Milton Horton, from the CRFM Secretariat, and uh, he is he knows the great work that you guys have been doing to build the capacity of your membership, and he's looking forward to the collaborative work that you will be doing together with the both the CNFO, CNFO and the National Fishermen's Organization. So thanks again for this kind invite. Um, thank you guys, the testimonials, they were very inspiring and I want to thank you. And uh, my story, we began in at the Jamaica Fisheries Department. I began working in fish at the Jamaica Fisheries Department. And I wanted to take this opportunity to, to say hello to Shalene Berry. I've always seen the name, but I, I couldn't connect. I knew her as Reynolds then. And um, so we worked together way back then, fisheries, and we are still in fisheries. So it's, it must be something that we love. Um, back in the back back then when I started, you know, I, I had a chip on my shoulder because I, I, I just graduated from the University of the West Indies, you know. So, you know, I know everything, I know it all, you know. So, you know, nobody could tell me anything because, you know, you know, that's how we were at the, in back in those days. And um one day the fisheries department, we had changed some policies regarding fishing, some fishing activities. And of course, that was based on, of course, you know, this is based on the science. And for me, it was it was my department, Shalene and I, which was selling, we collected the data, we did the data analysis. And part of the, the decision was made because of our analysis. But I just remember one day standing in the courtyard in the outside and the fisherman stormed into the building and wanted to see Mr. Kong and Mr. Michael because how could they do such a thing and stuff like that. You know, and I said to him, what, what's going on? And he started to explain and I'm like, you know, you know, me being a little arrogant thing and I'm like, but, but I did this, I did the stats, so I know what I'm doing. So, you know, I, I'm telling you what you need to do. And oh, that did go well with that Fisher band. And he taught me a very valuable lesson that day. He said, you know what? Hey, you come to the fishing beach and I'm going to teach you about fishing. Not from any book, not from, from any meet, meetings or workshops, or I'm going to teach you about fishing. And so I went to Greenwich Farm, Greenwich Farm, and that was where I learned about fishing. Um, and uh, that was my two education, just sitting on the beach, observing, learning, going out to sea with the fishermen, having this conversation and interaction, understanding their dynamics, understanding their families, understanding all of that. So I sat at, and since then I've been sitting at the feet of fishers from Grenada, I've lived in Goa, um, Jamaica, I've been across the island. I've even been to Pedro Banks with um, Celine. I have been in Belize. I've been working in Belize here for 20 years. And every time I always make sure that I'm with fishermen, Barbados, Guyana, St. Kitts, St. Vincent, Trinidad. And I've even mingled with fishers all the way up in Canada. That was my true fisheries education. So I know and I feel your pain and I have all the respect for you guys. 
The point is, I learned to listen and to understand the fisherman's perspective. The critical issue we tend to forget is that we communicate differently. When I just came to Belize, everybody was talking the Belize Creole, and they were shocked that I understood the Belize Creole. I said, it's very close to Jamaican Papua. And I understood. But I went to school five years learning Spanish, but when I sat in the kitchen of our Spanish speakers here in Belize, I understand nothing, nothing. Remember, it's not because you say something means we understand. Slow it down, show, say it in another way. The thing is technical. People need to listen more to our fishers. And don't, you guys, don't be afraid to tell us to break it down. I don't understand. Too many times we go to meeting and fishermen sit in the meeting and nod their heads. And when they get out of the meeting, that's when the real conversation starts. So my first point I want to make tonight is consult. Talk, talk, talk. Everybody have their own opinion. Let us talk it, talk. The second thing we need to do is listen deeply. Listen to the other's perspective. The third thing is, and I know fishermen don't like this one, compromise. We have to, not all the time, we're gonna get our ways. At some point we have to compromise, find a common ground. And then the consenting begins. And then we can move on. My second point, only two points tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The Caribbean Network of Fisher Folk Organization Leadership Institute, we had a, a nine module training course on topics to help you to become good leaders. The most fascinating thing that I found with this one is that it was facilitated by fishers. You guys were teaching your own fishers. It wasn't us teaching you, it was you teaching each other. And so I found the conversations very rich because the experiences that came from the trainers back to the, the listeners and the students, it was it just amazing. So I would like to all you graduates to do one thing for me. This is my second point. To find a fisher or two to mentor. Each one bring one. Listen, we have a younger group of fishers that are not engaged. They are disconnected from the issues. They are untrained with limited startup capital to even start their own businesses. The youth need to be engaged in our efforts. During this course, we have talked about a number of issues facing our fishermen. And I can just give a few. We have climate change, and this, we talked about the sargassum influx. We talked about how warm it was, the warmer, the hurricane, the rough seas that fishermen could not go to sea. We're not making enough money because our fishing days have been reduced. We talked about, um, St. Lucia talked about the loss of fishermen at sea and the safety at sea, that is the training that has been very essential for the region um, in terms of that aspect. We're looking at international issues that are facing us, such as the fishery subsidies, access to international markets. We're talking about illegal fishing. We're talking about conditions at our landing site. We're talking about finding mark local markets and moving, especially in this pandemic, how difficult that can be. And not to mention the price of fuel, oh my goodness. We are paying here in Belize between five to six US dollars for fuel. So I can just imagine what the fishermen are experiencing. Guys, we have a lot of work to do. We have to advocate, we have to lobby, we have to participate effectively in fisheries management. And I pause here, effectively, not just go to meetings and sit down and then come out and quarrel. We're talking about true engagement um, with the scientists, with the, with, with, the, with the regulatory organization, the fisheries bodies within our countries. But also 
we have to help our brothers in other countries. That's where we have to go. So each one bring one, each one mentor one. So for the next course, I want to see about 70 people because this is such a good course. I want to see at least 70 fishermen registered for this thing across the region and we can do it. We need to pool our resources and help each other. No man is an island right now. We have to come together. The problems are not simple anymore. They are quite complex. And the solutions, we have to think outside the box. So ladies and gentlemen, mentor another fisher, one fisher at a time. Your job is to convince them that their voice matters. It could be a ripple effect, but you have to be patient. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Sandra. That was a good charge. Um, Dr. Grant has tasked us with mentoring fishers, especially young uh, fishers. You know, even in Barbados recently, we've been seeing a few young leaders um, being more vocal on some of our online discussions. And it's always heartwarming to see, you know, in many cases, we see a lot, the, the average age of persons in fisheries increasing to 44, 50. And, you know, this, this tends to make me a bit concerned um, because, you know, who's going to, who's going to fish when the older guys retire. Uh, but I know we have, you know, we have spoken to this, um, even as we, we think about um, the, the CNFO's code of conduct and how it line, outlines some strategies to engage um, the youth in fisheries. You know, CNFO is leading the charge in that. And we continue to see how they advocate and provide a platform, especially, you know, what Shane did tonight was excellent, you know, and, you know, he can encourage his other friends in his, his age group to, you know, get involved in the industry. Uh, we see that it's, you know, quite profitable, the blue economy, is, you know, has, you know, a trillion dollar um, valuation. And this is something that we need to explore. Well, we are now to the presentation of awards. Um, I know Nadine was busy working on some fancy graphics and, 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 and audio and so on and you know she's she's very excellent I mean we've been thanking her all night but she she continues to exceed my expectations and, and ours and I'm looking forward um, to the presentation of the awards now um, Nadine I'll ask you to set everything up and we're going to enjoy this we're going to clap and congratulate our colleagues um, for this achievement We are proud to have 17 graduates of the CNFO Leadership Institute 2022. Charlene Berry. Charlene Kessel. Kajiana Charlery. Glenivan Clark. Paulette Coley, Sinovia Cyrus, Gary Gore, Gina Griffith, Winsbert Harry, Susan Hodge. Gina Ryan, Tylan Joseph, 
Adrian LaRoda. Norman Norris. Milton Summon. Margaret Rita Strong. Sylvia White. Thank you. Wow, I, I must say I'm very impressed with all those model shots. You know, we have quite a good looking bunch of, of graduates um, this evening. Nadine, that was spectacular. Thank you so very much. Hi, you Dr. Shalene. I, I would, I'm Shelly Ann Cox. I would like a few more minutes to add to those um, graduates. Okay. okay, no problem. So that was a that was a pre-recording that I did, and I I didn't miss, but I need to give special appreciation. I said I would have done this for persons who came very near to completing the modules. So I I would like to recognize two persons, Mr. Desmond Barrett and Mr. Peter Regis. This meant that they are very close, maybe one module. Um, to complete and, and have a certificate of award uh, given perhaps next day, next day if they choose to finish the course. And also I need to give special appreciation and recognition for Dr. Shelly Ann Cox. She was also a participant and she supported us throughout last year and this year's session. Uh, 2020 and 2021 session and so she almost did all the, the series of uh, nine modules with us so we want to recognize her for participating and supporting the senior for leadership institute dr grant also came to almost all of these sessions and uh, we know that she doesn't need all of this training and she show us how she receives um, knowledge from our Fisher folk experience that we share on mm -hmm. sessions or whenever she meets us directly and face to face. So we want to recognize you, Dr. Grant, for being in our sessions in 2021. And I think I saw earlier one of our partners, our very close partners in launching the Sinopo Leadership Institute. We must give special recognition um, so the project, the Steward Fish Project, and um, we work closely with um, the UWI Sermes, um, Dr. Maria Pena, if you're here, you can maybe put on your camera because this is a moment we want to ask all special graduates. Um, we have made this an occasion. Why I say that? We have accomplished something and we need to celebrate it. And we at the CNFO Mitch and I, we're so busy working, forgot that we need to stop and celebrate. So I want to thank all of you because you are the ones who message me to ensure that you get your certificate. It's really damaged, Shaleen. Well, not even, we're not even going to speak about Miss Paulette because she gave us the full schedule of how this show um, could be run tonight. And so we want to give you special acknowledgements participants and graduates for encouraging us to continue um, doing the work for you. So it's this at this moment, we turn on our cameras and if you have your certificate, you show it so that we can capture a picture of this very momentous um, event because this is not what we wanted. This was an event that y'all wanted and we're so happy um, to be here to celebrate. Um, with you and we must do this often stop and celebrate our achievements so let's go um if your camera is available let's turn on and and take a few minutes you can screenshot and get this this is a picture this is taking time and then um i'm going to ask us to close i see miss sue beautiful this is beautiful please help me with screenshots Thank you, Dr. Thank Grant, you, Dr. everyone. Um, that is just from us from the Senate, as you hear from, hear from me again.
Contact picture. Missinga. <laughs> All right. I need I need pictures, please. Someone help take some pictures. I'll take some more, and then we are going to end this part. Very very grateful um, for the support that we have been given. Thank you, Winsworth. We got your picture. All right, nobody else. All right, I'll take one more. Smile. Shane, I have to big you up, Shane. Next time we have to do a session where we can do a calypso because I really, I really was looking forward to that. I think I have two pictures here, everyone. So I will mute and the ceremony continue. Good night and thank you. Yes, just one last round of applause for everyone for a job well done. Well done, everyone. Well done. Yes, Mrs. Paulette Coley, she hails from Jamaica. She's going to join us now to give us the vote of thanks. And after that, we will have the charge and some closing remarks and then a prayer. Ms. Coley, Mrs. Coley. Good night, everyone. Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes, Loud Pauline. and clear, loud and clear. Yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Gratitude is not the greatest of virtues but the parent of all others. And this was a quote taken from pinstress.com. I take this golden opportunity to thank our chief guest of this function, Dr. Sandra Grant, for taking the time out of her busy schedule to be with us this evening. Dr. Shelley Ann Cox from Blue Shell Productions for moderating so professionally Thank you, Madam. Mr. Winsbert Harry, CNFO, Deputy Chair, for open with prayer, acknowledging that we can do nothing without the presence of the Most High God. Thank you, sir. Mr. Glaston White, CNFO General Secretary, for extending such warm and sincere welcome to all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Adrian LaRoda, CNFO Chair, for giving such detailed overview of this very prestigious program. Thank you, sir. Ms. Kajian at Charlie from St. Lucia, Ms. Sujan Hodge from Anguilla, and Ms. Sylvia White from Barbados for sharing their testimonials on the impact this program had on their individual lives and the capacity to be future fisher folk leaders. We thank you. Mr. Shane Caesar from Montserrat for such a beautiful poem, A Boy and His Dad. Thank you, sir. Dr. Sandra Grant from CRFM for encouraging us so timely and expressively and real to life encouraging us to consult, to listen, to compromise, and to consent, to find a fisher or two to mentor, to participate effectively for change, pool our resources to help each other, and to be convincing. Thank you, madam. Miss Nadine Nemod, CNFO Administrative Officer, for presenting us with our certificates, our awards, so professionally and with a sense of gratefulness for the effort we displayed to complete the course we had started. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Michel Lay, CNFO Chair, Program Coordinator, we thank you as well. Mr. Parmajor, John Orion, CFO Secretary, for adding 
some spice to the already prepared course that we have been served. I still want to thank you, sir. Mr. Chevenis Clark from Turks and Caicos, who will be dismissing us in prayer, I still want to tell you thank you. Indeed, it was an exciting journey. And for all those who, in whichever way, shape, or form, contributed to the outcome of this program, on behalf of my fellow teammates, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening. Yes, yes, let's please give Mrs. Polly such a lovely vote of thanks. Thank you so much. And now to give us a charge, CNFO's program coordinator, Mr. Mitchell Lee, a man who I hold in high esteem. Well, I hold everybody in high esteem, but you know, Mitch has advice that and words of wisdom and, and speaking to him is all always leave you inspired to do more. I want to welcome him tonight to give us the charge. Thank you. It's good night to everyone. It's a real pleasure to be at this particular occasion. And um, I really want to express my thanks to all of the awardees and all of those who've attended the sessions that we've held over the past several years. I, I really want to commend you for taking advantage of the opportunity that we've provided to, to increase your knowledge and to enhance learning. But today, I, I really want to share just a couple of things with you that I'd like you to consider as you journey onwards. And the first thing is that I want to say to you that built capacity does not stay with you. And I want to repeat that, and, and I want you to internalize it. Building my capacity should not stay inside me. And what I mean by that is that your built capacity should impact positively those around you. It should positively enhance your life. But most importantly, it should positively enhance your contributions to your community, to the industry, and to this world, and make the world a better place because of you. So I really want you to understand that my desire for you is that you share the capacity that you've built. And therefore, I would like you to consider deliberately impacting your organizations positively. I want you to consider deliberately impacting the fishery sector positively through practicing those things that you've learned through increasing your knowledge even further and through sharing those things with those that you come across. So the only thing I wanna leave with you tonight is this, shared capacity does not stay with you. Impact all of us positively. Thank you very much and God bless you real good. Dark and sweet Mitch, um, but very profound statement. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And now we're going to call on CNFO's treasurer, uh, Mr. Parmashar Janarain, aka Max, which is easier to pronounce. <laughs> uh, but we're going to call him to, to give us some closing remarks and then um, followed by a closing prayer by Ms. Richa Strong. Um, Madam Session Chair. Madam Session Chair. Yes, yes, yes. Before, Seen it. Uh, mm -hmm. brother, before Comrade Max comes uh, to offer the closing prayer, if I might, uh, with your leave, just to make a yes, brief, please brief, go ahead. A, a brief, brief comment. Um, mm -hmm. I want to thank everyone for, I personally want to thank everyone for participating in this session tonight. It was indeed a pleasure to see for the first time, Dr. Sandra Grant, I've always heard her voice, but never saw her in person. So Dr. Grant, uh, the pleasure is mine, and we look forward to working with you as CNFO. And we look forward to working with you as the new, as the deputy executive of the CRFM. There are a number of, of, of things that as CNFO uh, move forward, 
that we would like to advance with the help of CRFM. Uh, we feel that you are a good fit. And I just wanted to take this opportunity because I don't know in the many meetings that we'll have if we get this opportunity again to see actually see you in person. And give our regards to Mr. Milton Horton. Well done. Um, but uh, very short, shortly, yes, short and quick, just want to say thank you to everyone who was participating. It's good actually to put faces to the names that I've been seeing over this period because I don't, there are a number of people who I've not seen actually uh, uh, physically live um, um, in this setting. So pardon my interruption, but I just wanted to add that. And thank you very much. You're welcome. I would say it was a very good addition, not an interruption. <laughs> yes. So yes, we'll call call Max to give us the closing remarks. Max, over to you. Max, can, can you hear us? Okay. I'm actually seeing two Maxes in the participants list. One with a camera, one with the mic. I wonder if, okay, he's, yeah, he's, he's unmuted. Yes, Max, thank you. Good night, everyone. And um, um, I was tasked for doing the closing presentation. And um, much has already been said, I would not like to repeat, but I would like to acknowledge and thank the, our coordinator, Mitchley, our hardworking secretary, Nadine, our chair, Mr. Adrian and the other executives of the CNFO. And I would like to say that this project was developed under the Short Fish program. And it was aimed to, to improve or to develop the current leaders and potential leaders of the CNFO. And based from what we heard tonight from the testi testimonials of the participants, one can get a sense of how successful this project was. I urge all to look forward to our next cycle of leadership training that is slated to begin in August, 2022. And for those who did not participate this year and under this cycle. I urge them to, to do it because you have heard the testimonies and many of us have learned tremendously from these sessions. I would leave you with a quote from Jim Ron, an American entrepreneur and motivational speaker who said, a good objective of leadership is to help those who are doing poorly to do well, and to help those who are doing well to do even better. So I thank you all and good night everyone. Thank you and especially for that um, quotation at the end. Um, we're going to now close with a prayer. We welcome Mrs. Rita Strong. Okay, I'm actually seeing Mr. Clark joining. Okay, yes, we welcome you to give us a closing prayer. Good evening, everyone. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for what transpired into tonight's ceremony. 
You are the very source of all our goodness. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit who guided us in all our activities. We ask you to be with us as we journey through life. Guide us in all our undertakings that could be of service to you in the best way possible. May you be glorified, Lord, in all our undertakings. Amen. 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 Thank you. And we get a double prayer. Let's go, Mr. Clark. Do you have a prayer for us? Yes. Put on that. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Clark, if you unmute, you can give us another prayer. It won't hurt us. He was on the agenda and he came in just in time to see the closing prayer. Mr. Clark, if you can unmute and close us off, sir, that would be great. Hello. Mr. Clark is here. Greetings, sir. We appreciate your attendance. Yes. Um, uh, sorry to be late. Yes, sir. You're here and we are at the end of the program and we are now asking you to close off us in a, a final prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, okay. Let's bow our heads as I invoke God's blessing on this commencement, this commencement exercise. And pray for the leadership of this great organization, CNFO, and others who have deemed it possible to assume the responsibility for leadership in, in this particular area of human endeavor. Bow your heads. Father God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to meet on in the fashion like we have been meeting all along. We thank you for great lives and livelihood, for sparing our lives individually and collectively, to take over responsibility of a group of persons who might otherwise be less fortunate. We are grateful for your care and your protection throughout this pandemic. We, we pause for a moment to honor the lives of those persons who have been lost due to no fault of their own, but misfortune at sea. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to take care of their families, protect and guide and provide for their families. And for the others of us who have remained, continue the leadership in this session, I ask for your blessings. I ask for your guidance, your wisdom to establish ourselves as, le as leaders, not just for our fishing folk, but leaders in the individual countries in which you have given us residence. We thank you for Ned Nadine and all the others who have striven for years to provide the leadership for us as fisher folk and leaders in our respective nations and countries. We bless your name. We thank you there, God, for your guardianship and for all those who have contributed to the success of this organization called CNFO. We bless your name. We honor you and we pray, dear God, that all of us would be cognizant of the fact that weren't it for you on our side all these years, where would we have been? We thank you, we bless your name and we honor you and we pray that we will remain steadfast, unmovable in the great work that we have undertaken to do under your leadership. We bless you and we ask that everyone, under the sound of my voice and those who are watching live stream will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer, Mr. Clark.
And now this brings us to the end of our program. Um, we want to thank you for joining. Thank you for your encouragement, your prayers. Um, I see some people are still joining us right now. Um, but Nadine, do we have any music for the after party?